Welcome to Dunedin High School's production of Almost Maine. We're wicked glad you've joined us, and we ask that you silence or turn off all cell phones. Enjoy the show. I'm glad, Jeanette. I always do with you. I, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <sighs> and the stars, the stars, wow. Um, after all this time, I didn't know that you knew that much about the stars. Well, I mean, it's no big. <laughs> It's just stuff my dad taught me. It's it's no big oh. nothing. Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Pete. Hmm. I love you. <sighs> Oh my god, oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I love you too. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. oh, oh, are you cold? Do you want to go no, back no, inside? No, no, no. Um, I just want to sit like this, close. I feel so close to you tonight. It's nice to be close to you, Pete. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like being close like this, but um. I mean, I can think of other um, ways <laughs> of being close to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But that's not, that's, that's not, um, I, I like this. I like this kind of close. Right next to you. <laughs> you know, right now, I think I'm about as close to you as I could possibly be. <sighs> well... <laughs> Not really. Huh? Not really. I mean, you're not really close to me at all. I mean, technically, the farthest away from somebody you can ever be is if, well, you're right next to them. <laughs> if you're assuming the world is round like a ball, like, um... <sighs> like this snowball, for instance. <clears throat> The farthest away from somebody you can ever be is if you're right next to them. See, if I'm here, and you're here, and you just, you just, you just, that, that's far, that, that's pretty far. Um, yeah. Yeah. But now you're closer. And closer, and closer, and closer, and closer, and closer, and... And closer. Thank you. 
Hello? Oh, hello. I thought I saw someone. I was about to go to bed and I saw you from my window. Can I help you with something? Uh, oh, no, I'm just here to see the northern lights. Okay. Okay, it's just it's awful late and you're in my yard. Oh, I, I hope you don't mind. I'll only be here tonight. I'll see them tonight, the northern lights, and, and then I'll be gone. I hope you don't mind. Is that your tent? Yes. You've pitched the tent. So I have a place to sleep. In my yard. After I see them. I hope you don't mind. It's not that I mind. Do you it's, mind? I don't know if oh, I mind. Oh no, I think you mind. I don't no, mind. No, you do, you do. I'm so sorry. I didn't think you would. I didn't think, well, you see, it says in your brochure. My brochure? That people from Maine wouldn't mind. It says that people from Maine are different and that they live life the way life should be. And that in the tradition of their brethren in neural climbs like Scandinavia, that they'll let people who are complete strangers like cross country skiers and hikers and bikers just camp out in their yard if they need to for nothing. They'll just let you. I'm a hacker. It is true. Well, that they'll just let you camp out in your yard if they need to. Cause I need to camp out. Cause I'm where I need to be. This is the farthest I've ever traveled. I'm from a part of the country that's a little closer to things. Never been this far north before, or east. And did you know that Maine is the only state in the country that's attached to only one other state? Um. It is! Feels like the end of the world! And here I am at the end of the world, and I have nowhere to go. So I was counting on staying here, unless it's not true. I mean, is it true? Well, would you let a hacker who's where she needed to be just camp out in your yard for free? Well, I mean, if a person really needed to, well, really, really needed to. Well, if a person really needed to, sure, but. <gasps> oh, I'm so glad then. Thank you. <sighs> oh my gosh, I need that. Oh, here. <sighs> Thank you. So you're just looking for a place to see the lights from? Yeah, just tonight. Well, you might not see them tonight because you never really Oh, no. I'll see them because uh. I'm in a good place. Your latitude is good. And this is the right time. Solar activity is at an 11-year peak. Everything's in order. And boy, you have a good sky for it. There's lots of sky here. Used to be a potato farm. I was going to say, no trees in the way. And it's flat. <laughs> Makes for a big sky. So... You're a farmer. No, it used to be a farm. I'm a repairman. Oh. Fix things. Oh. <laughs> what? You're not a lobster man. No. I guess I thought that everyone from Maine was a lobster man and talked in that funny way like they do in Maine. And you don't talk that way. You're not down east. You're up north. And this is how we talk up north pretty much. Oh. Plus, ocean's a couple hundred miles away. Be an awful long ride if I was a lobster man. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, thank you. Thank you for letting me stay. I've had a bad enough time of things lately not to be given. Oh. Um. Oh. Um. Oh, boy. Um. I'm sorry. I just, I think I love you. Really? Yeah, I saw you from my window and I love you. Um, that's very nice and all. But, but there's something I think you should know. I'm not here for that. Oh no, I didn't think you were. I'm here to pay my respects to my husband. Oh. Yeah. My husband, Wes, he died recently, on Tuesday, actually. And see, the Northern Lights, well, did you know this? The Northern Lights are actually the torches that the recently departed carry with them to heaven. And see, it takes three days for a soul to find its way home to heaven, and this is Friday. This is the third day, so you see, I will see them, the Northern Lights, because they're him. He'll be carrying one of the torches. And see, I didn't leave things well with him, so I thought that I could come here and say goodbye and not be bothered. But, but what you did there just a second ago, that 
that bothered me, I think, and I'm not here for that, so maybe I should go and find another yard. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know what happened. Well, I do. I know what happened. I'm not the kind of guy who does things like that. Please don't go. Just do what you need to do and I'll leave you alone. Just consider what I did a very warm main welcome. All right. All right. I'm, my name's Glory. I'm East for Easton. It's the name of the town a little ways that way. I was born there. Mess up on the birth certificate. A son, Easton, born in Matthew, Maine, January 6, 1990. Instead of the other way around. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nah. So, Easton. Yeah. Yeah, I, I passed through near there on my way here. And, and by the way, where is here? Where am I? I, I couldn't find it on my map. Um, almost? What? You're in an unorganized territory. Township 13 range 7. It's not on your map because it's not a town technically. Well, what do you mean? Well, see, to be a town you gotta get organized. And we never got around to getting organized, so we're just almost. Oh! 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 What, are you okay? My heart! Your heart? My heart! Your heart? You have my heart! I have your heart? Oh. Just give it back to me for heart, please. I need it. Oh, here. <sighs> Thank you. Sure. I'm sorry. Did you just say that your heart is in that bag? Is that what you said? That your heart? Yes. It's heavy. Yes. Well, why is it in that bag? It's how I carry it around. Well, why? It's broken. What happened? Wes broke it. Your husband? Yeah, he went away. Oh. With someone else. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and when he did that, I felt like my heart would break. And that's exactly what happened. It broke. Hardened up and cracked in two. Hurt so bad, I had to go to the hospital. And when I got there, they told me they were going to have to take it out. And when they took it out, they dropped it on the floor, and it broke into 19 pieces. Slate. It turned to slate. Great for roofing. Well, why do you carry around with you? It's my heart. But it's broken. Yeah? Well, and it seems to me anybody who leaves somebody doesn't der deserve any respects. Well, well, that's what you do when a person dies. You pay them respects. <sighs> why? Because. Because why? Be because I, I killed him. Oh. <laughs> oh. And I'd like to apologize. See, he had come to visit me when I was in recovery. I was almost better. I was just about to go home. And he told me he wanted me back. And I said, Wes, I'm sorry. I have a new heart now. It doesn't want you back. And that just killed him. Oh, but it didn't kill him. You didn't kill yes, him. Yes, I did. Because he got so sad that my new heart didn't want him back. He just tore out of the hospital, and an ambulance that was coming in from an emergency didn't see him. It just took him right out. And if Glory. I had been there to take him back, he wouldn't have torn out of there like that and just Glory. been taken out like that. And so I think that for closure, the right thing to do is... Please don't do that anymore. Why? I love you. Well, don't. Why? Because I won't be able to love you back. I have a heart that can pump my blood, and that's all. The one that does the other one is broken. Please, let me have this. No, it's, it's mine. I can fix it. Well, I don't know if I want you to. Glory. Please, please it's give no it back. Good like this. It's my heart. Yes, it is. And I believe I have it. And I can fix it. 
I'm a repair man. I repair things. It's what I do. Sandrine. Hmm? Jimmy. Hey. 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 Oh, hey. Uh, how are you? I I'm. I'm good. I'm, I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how, how are you? I'm good, I'm great, how are you? Pretty good, how are you? Great, great. You look great. Oh? Uh, wow, you look great. Well, thanks, Jimmy. You do, you look so great. Thanks. So pretty, so pretty. Thanks. Well, uh, uh, here, uh, have no, a seat, how have no, you been Jimmy, doing? I can't. Come on, I haven't seen you in, well, months. Yeah. And months, 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 and months. How does that happen? You live in the same town as someone and never see him. I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen you since that night before that morning when I woke up and you were just gone. Yeah. Aw, look at you two tucked away in a corner over here. You're lucky I found ya. Is the man is lovely lady ready for another round? We're uh, not we're, together. Yeah. We're, we're all set. Yeah. All set. <laughs> Okay, well holler if you need anything. Okay. No, really, you gotta holler. It's busy up front. Thanks. So, are you here with anybody? Uh, or? Yeah, the girls, it's a, it's, it's, it's girls' oh. night. And I had to go to the bathroom and they're probably Wait, wondering where I am. So I just Sandy, like come on, I haven't even seen you. They'll survive the game for another minute or two. Come on, here, have a seat. Uh, what you been up to? Well, Did you hear I mean, that I took over dad's business? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'll run it now. Yeah, I heard that. Running the business. I heard that. Yeah, running the yeah, whole con show. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah good the for you. The whole shebang. Good, good for you. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we still do heating and cooling. Oh? Yeah, and we've expanded. We shampoo the rugs now. Oh. Yeah, it's a lot of work. A lot of work. Because, you know, your heat goes, and then, like, people die. It's serious. Yeah. yeah. I'm on call a lot. A lot. Because, you know, the guys who work for me, like, East comes in, he helps with repairs sometimes. I don't have the time off because I'm all alone. Right. Yeah. Oh. I don't know if you heard, but uh, my brother and sister got canned, so they left town. Oh. And mom and dad retired, headed south. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I heard that. Vermont. Oh. Yeah, winters there are so much easier. And uh, Spot went and died on me. Oh, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, I didn't know. No, no, it was his time, but he was a good fish. The point is, I really don't have anybody with me. And so I was wondering if maybe you'd like to come over. You just catch up and hang out. Uh, oh, and I forgot to tell you the Friday night special to Moose Cobby. Drink free if you're sad. So if either of you two are sad, or you two little lovebirds are ready for another couple buds or something, just let me know, all right? Okay. 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 So what do you say, Sandrine? You want to come over for fun? No, Jimmy, I, I can't. I, I just, I gotta get back to the girls. No. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. Cause you, you see, well, I've been meaning to tell you this for a while. It's just that there's a guy. I, I've, I've got a guy. Oh. Yeah. Well, good for you getting yourself out there again. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, yeah, well, it's a lot more than just getting myself out there and moving on. 
This is, uh, this is my bachelorette party. I'm getting married. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's uh that's something. Um I thought you said you weren't gonna do that. Get married. Thought she said it wasn't for you. Guess it just wasn't for you with me. Well, uh, who's the lucky guy? Martin LeFarrier. You you know him. Yeah, the, other the ranger, ranger guy over in Ashland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a legend, legendary. If you ever lost on a mountain in Maine, he's the guy you want looking for you. If you ever lost in this big bad northern world, Martin LeFarrier is the guy you want to come and find you. And he found you. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm sorry, Jimmy, that I I never told you. It's just. I thought you would have known. You would have heard. How would I have heard? Well, you know people talk. Not about things they know you don't want to hear about. And I gotta be honest, Sandrine, that's not something I would have wanted to hear about. But anyway, uh, when's the big event? Tomorrow. Really? Yep. Well, hey! What are you doing? Getting our waitress. What's her name? I don't know. She's new here. No. Hey! What are you doing? We, I'm getting our waitress. We gotta celebrate. You got found, and he's quite a guy. Jimmy. And so are you. Jimmy. Hey! What are, Jimmy! Hey! Jimmy, what is that? What? Oh, nothing. This is a tattoo. Don't worry about it. Hey! Ta when did you get a tattoo? After you left. It's no big deal, Sandrine. Hey! What is it of? What does it say? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Hey! Jimmy. Hey! No! Villain? Villain. Who's villain? Villain. It's supposed to say villain. Well, it doesn't say villain. It says villain. I know. I spelled it wrong. What? They spelled it wrong. It says villain, but it's supposed to say villain. Well, why is it supposed to say villain? Why do you want a tattoo that says villain? Because. Because why? Just because. Just because why? Just because... Well, when a guy's got a girl like you, and a guy loses a girl like you, and drives a girl like you away... You didn't drive me away. Well, I just think that's plain criminal, and it's villainy, and it deserves to be punished. So I punished myself, and I marked myself a villain so that girls would stay away, and I never have to go through what I went through with you again. Can I kiss you? No. You can get that removed. I you know. know. Okay. I got ahead. Sandrine? Yeah? I'm glad you got found. Thanks, Jimmy. Oh! Hey! Sorry, you were waving me down. I saw ya. But it's so busy up front. There's this bachelorette party. And those girls, it's a good thing it's not drink free if you're glad, because those girls are wicked glad. I had to fight my way through to find you, but I did it. I found you. Anyway, what can I get you for, another bud? Uh. Oh, oh, pal. I'm sorry. But hey, like I said, the Friday night special. Drink free if you're sad. So just tell me you're sad and you'll drink free. Just say the word. Because I know sad and you're looking pretty sad. Right, well, my name's Villian if you need anything. Villian? Yeah? Hi. Hi. I'm not sad. I just would like another bud, please. Okay. Villian? Yeah. I'm glad you found me. Aw. I'm glad you found me. That's adorable.
damn it. Yeah. No, you're not. I smashed you with an ironing board. I wasn't even looking. Are you hurt? No. Oh, you must be. I just smashed you. Where did I get you? In the head. In the head? Oh, come here. Are you okay? Is there any blood? No. Any discoloration? No. <laughs> then I'm okay. Well, I'm gonna get you some ice. No, I can't feel things like that. Like what? Like when I get smashed in the head with an ironing board. I don't get hurt. What? I can't feel pain. Oh, jeez, I'm crow. What the hell have I done to you? Nothing. Listen to you going on about how you're not able to feel pain. That's delusional. I've knocked the sense right out of you. No, I'm okay. Listen, I was gonna be a nurse, so I know. You took a good shot right to the head, and that's serious. No, it's not serious. Serious? Ironing boards are on my list of things that can hurt you. What is that? And plus, there's no blood or discoloration from where I got hit, so... Well, you can be hurt and not be bleeding or bruised. In my list, it's pretty reliable. Because, see, my brother Paul is helping me make it. And you know what? I can prove it to you. See, I bet if I took this ironing board, like this, and... I hit you in the back of the head with it, that wouldn't hurt you. See, did ow! that? Oh, ow, what the oh. hell was that? Why did I'm you sorry. do that? Did that? Oh, God. Oh, that did, didn't it? Ow. See, I didn't think ironing boards could hurt your head because they're not on my list of things that can hurt you. But gosh, maybe they should be on my list because... What are you talking about? I have a list of things that can hurt you. My brother Paul is helping me make it. And ironing boards aren't on it. Well, that ironing board hurt me. Yeah. So you should add it to your list. Should I be afraid of ironing boards? Well, if someone swings it at your head and wallops you with it, yes. Well, it's not. I have a list of things to be afraid of, too. And, well, ironing boards aren't on this list either. Well, they shouldn't be, really. No. No, you shouldn't be afraid of ironing boards. No. No. But they can hurt you. If they're used the way that you use them, yes. <gasps> oh, I got it. No, I got it. So, they're kind of like the opposite of God. What? <laughs> Well, ironing boards can hurt me, but I shouldn't be afraid of them. But God, my brother Paul says, God won't hurt me, but I should fear him. I guess. Boy, this is getting very complicated. What is? This business of learning what hurts, what doesn't hurt, what to be afraid of, what not to be afraid of. Are you sure you're okay? You're going on and on about crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I have congenital analgesia, he thinks. What? Some people... Congenital analgesia. Who thinks? My brother Paul. Some people call it hereditary sensory neuropathy type 4, but it just means I can't feel pain. You can hit me if you want to, to see. No. Go ahead. It won't hurt. See? Ow! See? Ow! See? Ow! Go ahead. No! Come on. No! Come on! No! Okay. You don't have to. Most people don't hit me. Most people just go away when I tell them about myself. You can go away too, if you want to. My brother Paul says that I shouldn't tell people about myself because I scare them. So I've actually recently added myself on my list of things to be afraid of, but... Oh! Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just clocked you. You hit me. Most people go away, but you hit me. I had to see what would happen. But are you okay? Well, is there any blood? No. Any discoloration? No. <laughs> then I'm okay. Well, buddy, you can be hurt and not even look it. But... Look, there are things that hurt you that make you bruised and bloody. And there are things that hurt you that don't make you bruised and bloody. Well... They all hurt. I'm Marvelin. I'm Steve. I live on the third floor of room 11. I live with my boyfriend Eric. I love him very much. Yeah, we saw you guys move in. Yeah, our roof collapsed from all the snow in December. We're just here until we can get our feet back on the ground. Oh, well that's good because that's what Maud Dudley says her boarding house is. A place where people can live until they get their feet back on the ground. My brother Paul says we've been trying to get our feet back on the ground our whole lives. Oh. Yeah, it just takes some people longer to do that than others. Yeah. 
You guys are loud. What? You and Eric, you yell and bang. We're right below you. Oh, sorry. We're going through a rough patch. It happens. Sorry. What's it like? What? To not feel pain. I don't know. I don't know what it's like to hurt, so I don't know. I don't really feel. Is this how you were born? Yeah, my brother Paul says I don't have fully developed pain sensors. They're immature, and because they're immature... Well, how does he know oh, that? Oh, he reads. But... And because they're immature, my development as a human being has been, well, retarded, he says. But... But he teaches me what hurts, though. Why? So I won't ruin myself. I have to know what hurts so I know when to be afraid. See, my mind can't tell me when to be afraid because I don't know what being hurt is. So I have to memorize what might hurt. Okay. And I also have to memorize what to be afraid of. Things like bears and guns and knives and fire and fear. I should fear fear itself. And pretty girls. Pretty girls? Yeah. Why should you be afraid of pretty girls? Well, my brother Paul says that they can hurt you because they make you love them. And that's something I'm supposed to be afraid of too love. But Paul says I'm really lucky because I'll probably never have to deal with love because I have a lot of deficiencies and not very many capacities as the result of congenital analgesia. Wait, what do you mean you're never gonna have to deal with love? Why? Because Paul says I'm never gonna know what it feels like. Well, how does he know that? Because it hurts. Well, it shouldn't. And plus, I have a lot of deficiencies and not very many capacities. You know what? A lot of people do. I'm so sorry. Oh my, I'm so sorry I did that. Are you okay? Well, is there any blood? No. Any discoloration? No. Then I'm all right. Yeah, you are. I'm so sorry I did that. It's just, you're very sweet. But you have a boyfriend, and you love him very much. Yes, I do, and yes, I do. And you just kissed me. Yes, I did. And it's Friday night, and you're doing your laundry. Yes, I am. And people who are in love with each other, they kiss each other, and they don't do their laundry on Friday nights. I've learned that people who are in love with each other, they go to the moose patty on Friday nights, or they go dancing, or skating, and they kiss each other. They don't kiss other people. You know what? I don't think that's love, what you and your boyfriend have. Look, I've been down here longer than I said I'd be, and he doesn't like that. Who? My boyfriend. Who you love very much. Yes. Even though you just kissed me? Yes. Wow, I'm going to have to talk to my brother Paul about this. No, do not talk to your brother Paul about this. What? Tell him to stop teaching you. Whatever he's teaching you, tell him to stop. What he's teaching isn't something you want to know. But I have to learn from him. Look. I was going to be a nurse, so I know. You need to go to a doctor and not have your brother read whatever it is that he reads. But... You know what? I gotta go. All right. You, you gotta go. You're, you're, you're leaving. I knew you would. That's what most people do. No, I just told you. He doesn't like it if I'm down here longer. Your boyfriend? Yes. He doesn't like it if I'm down here longer than I said I'd be. And I've been down here longer than I said I'd be. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I can't believe I did it to you again. Ow. Oh, my gosh. Wait, what did you just say? Ow. What's wrong? I want it back. What? I want it back. What? All the love I gave to you, I want it back. What? 
I've got yours in the car. Uh, you wait. know all the love you gave to me? It's in the car. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't want it anymore. Wait, why? I've made a decision. We're done. Wait, what? We're done. I've decided. And so I brought all the love you gave to me back to you. It's the right thing to do. Um, uh, oh. It's in the car. Well, I, I don't want it. I don't need it back. Well, I don't want it. What am I supposed to do with all, with all of it now that I don't want it? I, I don't know. Well, under the circumstances, it doesn't seem right for me to keep it, so I'm going to give it back. Under what circumstances? Gail, what are... What are you doing? I told you, I'm getting all the love you gave to me and I'm giving it back to you. Oh. Whoa, need some help? <laughs> no, I got it. It's, it's not heavy. Oh. There you go. And this is? All the love you gave me. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. A whole lot. Yeah. Wow. Well, what the heck am I supposed to do with all this? I, I don't know if I have the room. Well, I'm sure you'll find a place for it. And now I think it's only fair that you give me mine back because I want it back. You know, all the love I gave to you. Yeah. I want it back. So... Go get it. Lendl, go get it. Please. Now! Okay. What is that? It's all the love you gave me. That's all the love that I... <laughs> there is no way, but that, that is not, that is not what I... Is that, you know, really all I gave you? It's all I could find. Oh, okay. Okay. Gail, what's going on here? I told you we're done. Why do you keep saying because that? Because! Because when I asked you if you ever thought we were going to get married, well, well, do you remember when I asked you that in December, it was snowing? Yeah. Yeah, well, when I asked you that, you got so quiet. And everybody said that that right Wait, there should have told me uh, everything. Everybody who? Well, everybody. Who? Well, Marvelin Mar said. Marvelin yes, said that. Marvelin, Marvelin yes, said that, that how expert? quiet you got was all that I needed to know. And she's right. You don't love me. No, Gail. No, shh. And I've tried to fix that. I've tried to make you love me by giving you every bit of love I had. And now, now I don't have any love for me left. And that, that's, that's not good for a person. And so all the love I gave to you, I want it back because I want to bring it with me. Where are you going? <laughs> I need to get away from things. What? What things? There aren't things here to get away from. <laughs> Yes, there are. You. Me. Yes. You are the things in this town that I need to get away from because I have to think and, and start over. And so all the love I gave to you, I want it back in case I need it. Because I can't very well go around giving your love because that's all I have right now is the love you gave me. I can't very well go around giving your love to other guys because that just doesn't seem right and I just think that Other guys? There are other guys? No, but... Not yet. But I'm assuming there will be... Gail. So I think the best thing we can do now is... I think, you know, since I know now that you're not ready for what comes next for people who have been together for quite a long time... I think we're gonna be done. Gail. And so I think the best thing we can do now is 
return the love we gave each other and call it even. Jeez, I'm crow. Lendl, is this really all I gave you? I mean, I, I thought that I at least... I mean, what kind of person am I if this is all that I gave? No. No, 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 no. No, I know I gave you more than that, Lendl. I know it. I... Did you lose it? No, Gail. But did you lose it, Lendl? Because I know I gave you more than that. And I think uh, you're pulling something on me. And this is not uh, the time to be pulling something on me. I'm not... Pulling something on you, I can't. It's, it's just, I think, well, gosh. Maybe you should just take what you came for and I guess I'll see you later. Lendl, I didn't. Lendl. this? What the heck is this, Lendl? This is not the love I gave you, Lendl. You know, at least have the decency to give me the love. Lendl, what is this? It's a ring, Gail. What? It's a ring. What? Well, well. Oh. Uh, Lendl, this is a ring. Um, is this, um, a ring? A ring that, that you give to someone you've been with for quite a long time when you want to let them know that you're ready for what comes next for people who have been together for quite a long time? Yep. Oh. oh. I just, but, but all the love I gave to you, well, where it's, is it? It's right there. But that doesn't it, make... It is. But it's just... Th it's, that's it. <laughs> right there. You gave me so much over the years. Eleven. Over the eleven years. Eleven, yeah. You gave me so much, I didn't know what to do with it all. I put some in the garage and some in the shed. I asked my dad if he had any suggestions what to do with it. And he said, you got a ring yet? I said, no. And he said, get her one. It's time. When there's that much of that stuff coming in, that's about the only place you can put it. He said it all fit, and he was right. That thing's a lot bigger than it looks. So, there you have it. All the love you gave to me, just not in the same form as when you gave it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you still want it back? Yes, I do. Take it. Can I keep all that? It's yours. Thank you. Oh, Lendl, you didn't have to get me a ring. That's not what I was asking. I just... I did. It's time and it's honorable. Well, it's very beautiful. Oh, Lendl, I am so sorry. It's just... It's a Friday night and I was sitting home all by myself and we didn't even go out or anything and I was just thinking that that's not right and I just... Thank you. 
think about this. Oh my god. just saying it was bad chad i, I bad. hear i hear you but but you're not listening no, chad no, 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 it no. was you're bad. not listening because i had a pretty bad time myself no there's no way it, it was bad randy really yeah okay go she she said she didn't like the way i smelled <laughs> what Sally told me she didn't like the way I smelled. Never had. <laughs> Sally Dunlavey told you. Yeah. <laughs> when? When I picked her up. She got into my truck. We started backing out of her driveway. And all of a sudden, she started breathing real hard. Told me to stop. And said, I'm sorry. I can't go out with you. Because I don't like the way you smelled. Never had. What? Said she thought she was going to overlook it, uh, the way I smelled, but apparently that wasn't going to happen after all, and she slammed the door on me and left me sitting in her driveway. Because she didn't like the way you smelled? Yeah. Well, what kind of... I don't mind the way you smell. Oh, thanks. Jeez. Yeah. Told you it was bad. That's more than bad, Chad. That's sad. Yep. So I guess I'm the big winner, huh? And I get to pick tomorrow and I pick bowling. We're going bowling. Surf at the snowmobile club, a couple of beers at the moose patty, and just hang out. Well, I didn't say you're the big winner. What? Did I say you're the big winner? No, but... No, that's all pretty sad, Chad, and bad. But you didn't win. What do you mean? I mean you didn't win. So you can be being told you smell bad. Yeah. So, well then. <laughs> Mine's face broke. <laughs> what? Her face broke. Her... Only get one chance with a girl like Yvonne LaFrance and her face broke. Told you it was bad. How did her face break? Uh, when we were... Dancing? Dancing? Yep. Why were you dancing? 
because that's what she wanted to do on her date. So I took her, took her dancing down at the rec center. You pay and you get a lesson, you dance all night. They teach together dancing, how to dance together, and well, we learn the thing where you throw the girl up and over, and well, Yvonne, she's kind of small, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty strong, and well, I, I went to throw her up and over, and um, she, she went uh, over, over, and she landed on her face, and it broke. I had to take her to the emergency room. That's a drive. 38 miles. Yep. And she cried. I hate that. Whole way. <laughs> and she had me call her old boyfriend to come pick her up. <sighs> he did. Asked me to please leave. He's as small as she is. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's, that's just pretty bad. Yep. And <laughs> Yeah. So I guess you win. Yep. That right there might make you the big winner of all time. Yep. Baddest date guy of all time. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. So what do you pick tomorrow? Bowling. Supper at the Snowmobile Club. Couple of beers with the moose patty. Hang out. Good. Dang it! We always fail. Don't worry about it, I'll pick it up later. <laughs> what? I don't know, man. Just, just sometimes, I don't know why I bother going out. I don't like it, Randy. I hate it. I mean, why would I spend my Friday night with some girl I might maybe pick it up when I know I can be spending out with someone I know I like, like you, you know? Yeah. I mean, in the middle of Sally telling me she didn't like the way I smelled, I got real sad. Oh, buddy. And, and, and all I could think of was how not much in this world makes me feel good or makes much sense in the world. And I, and I got real scared because there, there's got to be something in this world that makes you feel good or, or at least makes sense or what's the point, right? Then uh, I got out of being sad. I actually felt okay be, because there is one thing in this world that makes me feel good and, and it does make sense and it's you. Whoop, I'm, I'm gonna head. Yeah. Um, uh, I got, got to work in the morning. Well, um, I'm working first shift at the mill so I can pick you up anytime after three. I'm, I don't know. Me and me and Lendl, we got a long day tomorrow. We got to four, catch up four, fixing the roofs from five, the snow in December. Or six I'm or probably seven. gonna be busy all day. I don't know when we'll be well, done. you know, just tell me what. Hey, hey. I'll see you later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, Randy. Whoa, Chad, are you all right? Yeah. What the? You here? Oh, thank you. Yeah. What was that? Are you all right? What just happened there? Oh, uh, you know, I I just fell. Well, I figured that out. I, no, 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 no. I mean, I I think I just fell in love with you, Chad. I, yep, <laughs> that's what that was. Uh, me falling in love with you. I, Come on, what are you doing? Come on, get up. No, 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 no. Would you cut that out? Well, well, I can't help it, all right? It's taking over me. I fall in love with you here. Chad, I'm your best buddy in the whole world. And I don't know what you're doing or what you're going on about, but what the heck is your problem? What the heck are you doing? Jeez, I'm crow, you're my best friend. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just something you can't mess with. And you messed with it. You don't do that. Do you know something? You're about the only thing in this world that really makes me feel good and makes sense to me too. And you're going 
followed up by telling me this and doing that and now it just it doesn't make much sense at all and it doesn't feel good you've done a real number on a good thing here buddy because we're friends there's a line when you're friends that you can't cross and you crossed it It still feels like you're mad. I'm not mad. I just said that I wish that but you'd, you were, you'd pay you more are. attention lately. You're mad. I'm not mad. I was having fun tonight, I thought. I mean, I had fun, did you? Yeah. Good. I mean, Chad called me into the mill. I, I had to work. You have to work, Phil. I get it. I did. Phil, where's my shoe? What? Where's my shoe? I can't find it. Well, it, it's got to be here. Where is it? Is this you being funny? No. Because it's not funny. I... It's cold out here. Well, you're the one that wanted to go skating. Phil. W well, find it. It's got to be here. I was never mad. I mean, I was disappointed, but now I'm done. Mars. I had fun tonight skating. I thought it would be fun. It was. Forget all the stuff. Get us away from the kids. Get us back to where we used to be. The first time you kissed me on a Friday night, just like this one. You remember? Right here, Echo Pond. I know where we are. Where the heck is your shoe? Maybe it's in the car. Where'd you put your skates on? Out here in the car. I put them on with you, Phil. Right here. Well, it's not in the car. Oh, look, a shooting star, a shooting star! Where, where, Shh. where? Shh, I'm wishing, I'm wishing. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, you did. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, it's just not all that surprising. What? That you didn't see it. What? The shooting star. Why? Because you don't pay attention, Phil. You see, when you say things like that, I feel like you're still mad. I'm not. Mars. I'm not mad. Where is my shoe? Gosh, maybe it is in the car, I mean. It's not in the car. I have one shoe on already. I know I didn't take my skates off in the car. This is the weirdest thing. I mean, I'm not gonna take one shoe off out there and take the other one off out here. What's wrong? Huh? Uh, oh, nothing. I, I was making a wish of my own on a, on a regular one. Oh. You uh, you want to wish on it with me? Yeah, sure. That'd be nice. Which one? Uh, you, you see Hedgehog Mountain? Uh huh. Straight up, right above it. The bright one? Yeah. That one? It, yeah. That one right there? Yeah. Phil? Yeah? That's a planet. Huh? That's a planet. You're wishing on a planet. That's yes. a... Yes! Well, how do you know? And it's um 
when you wish upon a star, not when you wish upon a planet or Saturn. I know, Saturn. I know, but how do you know? They said it on the weather, Phil. Saturn's the brightest object in the sky this month. It'll be sitting right above Hedgehog Mountain for the next bunch of weeks. They've been saying it on the weather all week, and your wish is never gonna come true if you're wishing on a planet. Well... You gotta pay attention. Why do you keep saying that? What? That I gotta pay attention. Because you don't. What are you talking about? Phil, happy anniversary. Uh, uh huh? Happy anniversary, Phil. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I... I knew you were mad. I'm not mad. You're mad at me. And pretty soon, out of nowhere, it's gonna get ugly. Phil, I'm not mad. I mean Mars. I'm sorry. I know I missed some things, but I gotta work. I gotta take a double at the mill when Chad needs me. He's helping me, us, out, you yeah, know? Yeah, I know, me I know. Time. No, you don't know. Me working is for us and the kids, and it's a lot sometimes, and it messes me up. Phil, you gotta work, and I understand that. What I don't understand is why I'm lonely, Phil. I got a husband and a couple of great kids, and I'm lonely. You just, you go away, and I don't know where you go, but you go somewhere where you don't remember things, and you forget your son's first hockey game, hockey you forget Mickey's birthday, and you forget our anniversary. I mean, I brought you here hoping that you'd remember about us. And you didn't. And it makes me so mad that I don't know what to do about it anymore. You lie. What? You lie so bad. What? You're mad at me, but you don't tell me. Because you, you wouldn't pay over. attention if I no, did tell no, you. No, no, Because you don't know how to tell me what you feel like about me. So I never know where I am or where I stand. Maybe that's why I go away. So I can know where I am for a second. And you know what? It's lonely there too where I go. And you sent me there. You went away a long time before I did. And now all you do is lie. I don't lie. Yes, you do. You say you're not mad, but you're mad. You say you have fun, but you didn't. You didn't have fun tonight, did you? No. But you kept saying you did. I didn't have fun, Phil. I don't have fun with you anymore. Did you? No. No, I had a rotten, lousy time. Well, then what are we doing? What are we waiting for?
Just a minute. I know this isn't going to be very easy, but I was just out there all alone in the world and I got so scared because all I could think about was how I had no place in this world, but then all of a sudden I realized that I did have one place and that was with you. So I took a plane and I took a taxi to come and see you and, and thank God you're, oh. You're, you're not, uh, I'm sorry. This is the right house, I, I'm looking for Daniel Harding. Does Daniel Harding live here? You're looking for Daniel. Looking for Daniel Harding, yeah, he lives here. I thought, oh, he doesn't, does he? I'm so sorry, I'm so embarrassed. Who is this woman and what is she doing here? I just, I always thought he would be here, always. Do you know him? Big, big, strong guy, wrestled, heavyweight, all Eastern Maine. Strong, big and strong. Do you know him? He played hockey too. Well, oh, um. Don't even answer that. That's a horrible question to ask of somebody who lives in a small town. As if everybody knows everybody else in town just because it's small. I can't believe I asked you that. I don't live here anymore, but when I did, I hated when people would ask me that. Because you don't really know each other any better in small towns than you do in big towns. Because, I mean, you know who you know, and you don't know who you don't know, just like anywhere else. I'm so sorry to have bothered you. It was just, when his parents passed away, he kept the house, I heard, but I guess he went away. I never thought he would. I thought he was one of the ones who stayed. I didn't stay. I went away. Most people do. Yeah. I guess he did too. I never thought he would. You really gotta hang on to people before you lose them. Wish there was something you could keep them in, like, like, oh, oh look, there he is. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Boy, it's cold out, I forgot. Yeah. I can't believe. I took a taxi here from Bangor to see him. That's far. Yeah. That's 163 miles. Yeah. This place is a little further away from things than I remember. Why did you do that? Because I could only fly as close as Bangor and I had to see him as fast as I could. But why? I wanted to answer a question that he asked me. Oh. Before I left, he asked me a very important question, and I didn't answer it. And that's just not a very nice thing to do to a person. Well, that's being a little hard on yourself, he don't you He asked me to marry him. Oh. And you, um... Didn't answer him. No. Whew. Yeah. So that's why I'm here, to answer him. I mean, I didn't answer him in the first place because I didn't have an answer at the time. I mean... I was going to college, and then the night before I'm about to go off and do what I hope and dream most in the world, he asks me, will you marry me? And I mean, what was I supposed to say? What was I supposed to do? I was leaving in the morning. I don't know. I mean, I told him that I'd think about it overnight, that I would be back before the sun came up, but then I just, I left him. I left him standing right there. And I, I didn't make it back before the sun came up, or at all. That sounds like an answer to me. No, no, that wasn't my answer. I was just, I was going off, and, and I think that... What? I think he thought that I would say yes. 
Well, a guy's probably not going to ask a girl that question unless he thinks she's going to say yes. I know, and I'm afraid he probably waited up all night just thinking and thinking about it, and I just want him to know that I know now that you can't do that to a person. You can't not answer a question like the one he asked me. You can't do that. Especially to someone that you love. You loved him? I don't know. I mean, we were kids. Yes, I did, I do. I feel like I dashed his hopes and dreams. Come on you, you give yourself too much credit. I mean he was young, that's all you have to be to get your hopes dashed, just be young. And everybody starts out young, so everybody gets their hopes dashed. And besides, I don't think you really dashed his hopes. Because if you dash somebody's hopes, well, that's kind of a nice way of letting them down because it hurts, but it's quick. If you were to have said no, that would have been dashing his hopes. But you didn't say no. You just said nothing at all, and that's kind of the long, slow, and painful way of killing hope. You know, because it's still there, hanging on, and it never really goes away, and that's kind of like giving somebody like a little less air to breathe every day until they die. Yeah. Well, thank you. For what? I don't know. Okay. Um, goodbye, Hope. Goodbye. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to have bothered you. I was just out there and I got so scared because all I could think about was how with Danny was my one place in the world and then... Uh... Wait. You called me Hope. How did you know my name? Danny? Hello, Hope. Danny, I didn't even recognize, I I didn't even recognize I you. You're just, you're, you're I so... I know. You're so small. Yeah, I, uh, I lost a lot of hope. That'll do a number on you. Danny, I'm so <laughs> sorry, I... It's okay. Because you know something? You're early. What? You're early. You said you'd be back with an answer to my question before the sun came up, and geez, them crows, the sun's not even close to being up. It only went down a few hours ago. Look at how early you are. It's very good of you. <laughs> so, um, a taxi all the way from Bangor? Yep. To tell me... Honey? Dan, hon! Who's there? Just somebody, um, needs directions, that's all. It's awfully late for directions. Yes, who's that? Listen, um, I'll be right in. Okay. Hopeless and I. What? I hope you find it. Your place in this world. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Danny.
<laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay. <sighs> this is it. <laughs> You're in. You're inside. This is the porch. <laughs> it's winter ice. So Dave, what? What do you got to do in here you couldn't do outside? Well, I got something here for you. Here. What's this? It's, 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 boy that was fun tonight, Rhonda. Yeah, it was! I mean, 20 miles out there? Yeah! Beans and Franks at the Snowmobile Club? Awesome! 20 miles back, a couple of beers at the Moose Patty? Perfect! And boy, you flew on your new sled, man. It's a Polaris, man! I know, and you whooped my butt. Yeah, that's what you get for riding an Arctic cat. You get your butt whooped and I whooped it. I know. Whooped your butt. I know. Whooped your butt, Arctic cat, man. I know, I know. I'm not saying you didn't. That was fun. So, this is, um, well, we've been together now. Together? Well, uh. Together? What are you talking about, together? Well, I mean, we've been friends for quite a few years now. And you well, getting uh, all girl on me? She, and, well, here. What's this? Open it. Together. I don't know about together. Just open it. Wrapped it really tight. Yeah. What is it? Can you not see what it is? It's a picture. Yeah. A painting. Yeah. Where'd you get this? It looks homemade. What do you mean it looks homemade? It looks like someone really painted it. Well, someone really did paint it. Did you paint this? Yeah. For me? Yeah. Oh. Why? Well, I, uh... I mean, um, thank you. There you thank go. You. There Thanks. you go. Thanks. Yeah. That's what people say. You're welcome. So, Dave. I didn't know you painted. Well, I, uh... I'm taking adult ed art at nights. Merle Haslam over at the high school stage in it. It's real good. And this is my version of one of those stare at it until you see the thing things. Ever seen one of these? Some of the old painters did it with dots. They called it something. But I did it with little blocks of colors, see? And if you just stare at the little blocks of colors, they're just colors. But if you take a step back and look at the whole thing, it's not just colors, it's a picture of something. Picture of what? I'm not gonna tell you, you have to figure it out. Dave! No, it can be a little frustrating. It takes some time. Well, why are you gonna give something that's gonna frustrate? No, no, no. I just, gotta, I just mean you gotta not try to look for anything. That's what'll frustrate you. You just gotta kinda look at it, so it doesn't know you're looking at it. What are you talking about? You gotta trick it. See? Trick it. And hopefully, you'll eventually see what it is. There you go. There you go. Dave, this is stupid. I don't see anything. No, you were doing great. Dave! Alright, alright, fine. Do what you normally do at nights and check it out real casual-like. I usually have a bud and I talk to you on the phone. Okay, do that. I'll grab you a bud and you can talk to me. No! No! What? I'm out of bud. Only got natty lights. Alright, I'll get you a natty light. You can have your beer and talk no. to me. No! Why not? Come on, let's go inside and grab a beer. I'm, look, we gotta, I gotta figure out what this thing is, see? See, I'm tricking it. I'm tricking it. It's what people who've been together for a long time do. Hey, quit, stop. How many years I've known you? I come out here every Friday night and I've never been inside your house for beers. That's unnatural. It's unnatural, Rhonda. So why don't we do what the natural thing to do is and go inside and grab some Hey, beers. Dave, quit running your mouth. You know, I gotta, I gotta sit and I gotta look at this thing. You're doing it wrong. Shh. You have to trick it. You have to trick it. Okay, I think I got something. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 
Roadkill. What? Dead raccoon and mow the road. No, that's not what it is. Okay. Deer. Dead bloody deer in the middle of the road. No, what? It's not a dead deer in the middle of the road. Oh. Moose. What? Dead bloody moose in the middle of the road! No, Rhonda, it's not a dead moose. Really? Come on. Well, I don't see what it is. And don't get mad. Jeez, I'm crow. Can you really not see what it is? No. Can I give you a hint? Yeah. What are you doing? I was giving you a hint. Don't ever do that again. Ever. And get out of here. Jeez, I'm crow. Hey, Rhonda. What? You really are what they say. What? What do they say? That you're a little hung up there. Who says? Everyone. Everybody who? Everyone, Rhonda. It's what people in town say. When? When they're talking. They say you're a little hung up there, so I gotta be a little persistent. There, they say, and they were right. Who says? Suzette. Suzette? Yeah, and Dan. Suzette and Dan Harding say that I'm a little hung up there and you got to be a little persistent there. Yeah. Okay, well who else? Marcy. Marcy? Yeah, and Phil and... Marcy and Phil. Lendl and Gail and... Gail? Randy and Chad and... Randy and Chad? Marvelin and Eric and... Eric? Sandrine and Jimmy and East and... East? That's just to name a few. Well... Why would they? Love those guys. I'm good to those guys. That's talking about me. That's mean. I don't think they were saying it to be mean, Rhonda. I think they were telling me to kind of warn me on what I was getting myself into with you. Because they like you and me. Us. They're rooting for us, Rhonda. Who? Everyone. East and Gail and Landell and Randy. Well, and they Dad never and... told me they were rooting for us. Well, that's because you're a little hung up there, Rhonda. Just, I. Don't know what I did wrong. I'm sorry if I made you mad. I just gave you a kiss. I mean, why not give me one back? It's a polite thing to do. Get a kiss. Give a kiss. Very fair. Just give me a kiss, Rhonda. I don't know how. What do you mean? I don't know how. i never done it before. You've never kissed? I won arm wrestling at every winter carnival from fifth grade on. In Bushy's lumber mill in plywood. That's just not something most men would wanna want. Oh, now where do you get that from? From everybody. Well, I gotta tell you, you got it all wrong, Rhonda, because there's a lot of guys out there who take good long looks at you. Holy cow, so you've never, you've never had. No? Well, gosh, I think that's real neat. You know what? Do me a favor. Try giving me a kiss and see what happens. And I won't make fun of you or anything bad like that. I promise. No, 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 no. Let's uh, let's look at this this thing. Is it um, apples, cherries, big open faced strawberry rhubarb? Oh. I see it. It's a. Uh, it's, it's. It's nice. It's really nice. It's good. You're good at this. Yeah. Yeah. And you are really good at this. I thought it'd be hard, but it's not at all. I feel like. I want to do it longer, but I also feel like I want to do something else next, but I don't know what it is. I do.
You want to know what comes next, next? Yeah. Well, why don't we go inside and I'll show you. Wait! We're working for a shift tomorrow. It says who? You mean, we're calling in? We're calling in? We're calling in! Because me and you, we're not working first shift or any shift tomorrow. So, you get yourself inside of here, Mr. Arctic Cat Man. You show me what's next. Thank you so much for coming. Um, these are our seniors. Everyone else leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are incredible and this is their final bow. So yeah, one more. Miss Cindy Scullion Fuller to come on stage real quick. Just real quick. So, um, I'm gonna scoot over real quick so she can come here. It's a tradition for the cast and crew to get together and make something very special for our director. So, since this is her first show here and our new director for a very long time, we would like to present a signed poster of all the cast and crew. <laughs> we love you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. I just want to say thank you guys before I break out in tears because you know it's close. Thank you so much for the most incredible first debut show at Dunedin High that a, a gal could ask for. Thank you so much. I love you. You're amazing. I tell you that all the time, but thank you. And thank you to Dunedin for being so welcoming. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for coming.